Don't tell me the sky is the limit when there are footprints on the moon. These are the words of Alan Shepard. Wishing a warm day to one and all. Hope you all are fine and safe at home. I'm Zena and today let's learn about the world space research history. The journey of the man for solving the mysteries of the world has been quite fascinating. It started from finding the shape of the earth, reached in stepping on the moon and now we are looking forward for leaving footprints on the Mars. Don't you think that the world space research history is quite fascinating? Then what are we waiting for? Let's learn about it. It has been a lot of years since man is taking answers for his biggest questions. While some people believed it's impossible to leave Earth and explore the space, some people were busy making it possible. The efforts made to explore the space started even before we had the technology for it. Have you heard about the Greek astronomer Thales? Who is he and what are his contributions? Were all of his theories correct? So many questions are coming to your mind right now, right? Don't get confused. Let's check it out right now. Thales from Miletus was a Greek mathematician and pre-Socratic philosopher from Miletus in Ionia. He was one of the seven sages of ancient Greece. He is regarded as the first philosopher in ancient Greece. He is often referred as the father of science. He has been credited with the discovery of five geometric theorems. There are many other important findings of him, but he thought that the earth must be a flat disk which is floating in the expanse of water. Heraclitus Homericus states that Thales drew his conclusion from seeing moist substances turn into air, slime and earth. Even though the theory of Thales was wrong, many of his findings and contributions are still helping us to solve the mysteries of the world. Later, Aristotle popularized the theory of geocentric world, in which the Earth is the center of the universe, sun, stars and other planets revolving around it. Later, Nicolaus Copernicus found out that this theory is extremely wrong Sun is the true center and Earth is just one among those planets revolving around it. It's not geocentric, it's heliocentric. But this theory wasn't accepted at that time and it led to a lot of controversies in the society. Aristotle was a Greek philosopher and a polymath during classical period in ancient Greece. Aristotle's model of universe was geocentric with the sun, stars and planets orbiting the earth. He believed the universe is finite in space but exists eternally. His theory of geocentric world was really popular. Almost every scholar during the ancient time believed in it. Nicolaus Copernicus was a Renaissance mathematician, astronomer who formulated the theory of heliocentric universe. That the Earth is not the center of the universe, Sun is the true center. Planets orbit around the Sun, and Earth is just one among those planets. But many people opposed this theory and it led to a lot of controversy. As I said before, the geocentric world theory was really popular in the ancient time. Even great scholars believed in it. Then how it was proved wrong? It was by the invention of telescope in the early 1600 by the Italian astronomer Galileo Galilei. Galileo Galilei was an Italian astronomer. After hearing about the Danish perspective glass, Galileo constructed his own telescope in 1609. His demonstration of telescope earned him a lifetime lectureship. In 1610, when Galileo first pointed his telescope into the night sky, he discovered evidence to support the Copernicus heliocentric theory.
So, after the invention of telescope, the controversy about the heliocentric world was solved. Since the very beginning, humans were obsessed with the flying signs. They wanted to fly high, but how? We don't have any wings, but still we can fly with the wings of our willpower, with the wings of our intelligence. For that, they invented a lot of machines, but somehow all of them failed. But later, they knew how to escape the gravity and things like hot air balloon popularized. But do you think they were satisfied with it? No, they wanted to fly more higher. They wanted to make more advanced machines for flying. And that's how the Wright brothers invented the world's first aeroplane. Early flying machines include all forms of aircraft studied or constructed before the development of modern aeroplane by 1910. The history of these flying machines is unclear. However, Leonardo da Vinci has an important role in it. He designed a pyramid-shaped parachute that remained unpublished for years. It is believed that the kite was invented by ancient Chinese people. Being inspired from Damage's parachute model, many people tried to make giant kites that can carry man. But those attempts wasn't much successful. In 1783, the French brothers and a group of their assistants developed hot air balloon and it became very popular. Over the sexes, of their 1902 glider, the Wright brothers were no longer content to merely add to the growing body of aeronautical knowledge. They were going to invent the aeroplane. During the spring and summer of 1903, they were consumed with leaping that the final hurdle to the history. On December 17, 1903, Wilbur and Orville Wright made four brief flights at Kitty Hawk with their first powered aircraft. The Wright brothers had invented the first successful aeroplane. After the we, invention human of beings. aeroplane, humans were able to fly in the atmosphere. But still, they wanted to fly more higher. They wanted to explore the space. As I'd said before, many people still believed it's impossible to explore the space. But after the birth of many science fiction stories like The War of the Worlds by H.A. Wells opened the mind of people. They started believing in the possibilities of space exploration. They believed in it, they started working for it, and they also supported it. We human beings have been venturing into space since October 4, 1957. When the Union of Soviet Socialistic Republic or the USSR launched Sputnik, the first artificial satellite, to orbit the Earth. This happened during the period of political hostility between Soviet Union and United States, known as Cold War. For being several years, the two superpowers had been competing to develop missiles, called International Continental Ballistic Missiles to carry nuclear weapons between continents. In the USSR, the rocket designer Sergei Karolev had developed the ICBM rocket called the R-7, which would begin the space race. The Sputnik 1 was the first artificial satellite of Earth. It was launched into an ecliptic low Earth by USSR on October 4, 1957 as a part of Soviet space program. The US Congress passes legislation for establishing the National Aeronautic and Space Administration or NASA, a civilian agency responsible for coordinating America's activities in space. On July 29, 1958, NASA was created to respond to Soviet Union's October 4, 1957 launch of its first satellite, Sputnik 1. Friends, do you know which vehicle helps us to reach the space? Yes, you're right, it's the rocket. But do you know that the rockets were actually invented as a weapon to use in wars? One scientist named Robert H. Goddard 
did a great contribution to the mankind by designing rocket launchers that was used in World War I. He also succeeded in launching the world's first rocket. But he wasn't supported by the society. Today, he is considered as the father of modern rocket science. Do you know which was the first object to reach the surface of the moon? Let's learn about it. Luna 2, originally named second Soviet cosmic rocket, was the sixth Soviet attempt to send a probe crashing into the moon. But it was the first successful attempt for any nation, making the Luna 2 probe the first human-made object to reach the surface of the moon. January 1958, National Aeronautics Space Administration or the NASA was formed. By the end of that month, they succeeded in launching Explorer 1 to the orbit. Explorer 1 was the first satellite launched by United States and was a part of U.S. participation in International Geophysical Year. The mission followed the first two satellites the previous year, the Soviet Union's Sputnik 1 and Sputnik 2, beginning the Cold War race between two nations. Friends, do you know about Yuri Gagarin? He was the first person to travel in the space. Yuri Gagarin was a Soviet Union pilot and cosmonaut who became the first human to journey into the outer space. Achieving a major milestone in the space race, his capsule Vostok 1 completed one orbit of Earth on 12th April 1961. There was a commodity might between countries in making achievements in the field of space research. After the achievement of Yuri Gagarin, the Soviet Union was one step ahead of America. But America wasn't ready to give up. In 1961, the American President Kennedy made an announcement that the, the America will succeed in landing a man on the moon and returning to Earth safely. Many people mocked it and said that it sounds like a science fiction. But it, but it got a great boost from the American spirit. This was the beginning of the story of first landing on the moon. Apollo 11 was the space flight that first landed humans on the moon. Commander Neil Armstrong and Luna Module pilot Buzz Aldrin formed the American crew that landed the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle on 20 July 1969. Neil Armstrong became the first person to step on the lunar surface. 19 minutes later, Edwin Aldrin or Buzz Aldrin joined him. They spent about two and a quarter of hours together. Outside the spacecraft, they collected 47.5 pounds of lunar materials to bring back to Earth. Command module Michael Collins flew the command module Columbia alone in the lunar orbit while they were on the moon's surface. Armstrong and Aldrin spent about 21 hours and 36 minutes on the lunar surface. At a site they named Tranquility Base upon landing before lifting off to rejoin Columbia in low run orbit. Armstrong's first step into the lunar surface was broadcasted on live TV to a worldwide audience. He described the event as one step for a man, a giant leap for mankind. Apollo 11 effectively provided U.S. victory in the space race. They landed a man on the moon. Kennedy's promise was finally accomplished. Can you recognize these people? Who are they? Yes, they are Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins. They are remarkable personalities in the history of space research. Till this date, 12 people have landed on the moon. Do you want to know their names and nationalities? Let's check it out. They are Neil Armstrong, Edwin Aldrin, Charles Conrad, Ellen Bean, Alan B. Shepard Jr., Edgar T. Michel, David R. Scott, James B. Irwin, John W. Young, Charles M. Duke, Egan Sernan, and Harrison H. Smith. 
All of them are Americans. The story of the first landing on the moon is so inspiring, right? Ah, while talking about the first landing on moon, I remembered about something. Do you know what's the specialty of 20th July? Yes, it's the moon day. It's celebrated in the remembrance of man's first landing on the moon. Each year, we celebrate moon day to honor an incredible accomplishment of mankind, the first walk on the moon. There are many other milestones in the field of space research, but now I don't have any option to point out all of them. Our India has also given a lot of contribution to the field of space research. But I want you to know that an achievement made in the field of space research is not an achievement of a person or a country. It's the achievement of the entire humankind. Now I think that it's time for me to conclude my words. But before that, I want to remind you one thing. Whenever you think about your limits, remember that there are footprints on the moon. There's nothing that you can't do. It all starts with a simple thought. Then you have to work hard on it. Then it will become a history. Now I'm concluding. Thank you. Have a nice day. Stay home. Stay safe and keep exploring new every day.